Welcome to the Revolution Church Podcast. Before we begin, we'd like to remind you that our ministry is supported 100% by listeners like you. To make your 100% tax-deductible donation today, please visit revolutionchurch.com slash donate. You can also learn more by clicking the donate section on the website. Hello, and welcome to Revolution. As always, this is Jay. Thanks for making it. Um... Always glad uh, that you invite Revolution Church into your sacred space, wherever that may be, car, gym, house, computer, who knows where the shadow lurks. Um, We are in the middle of Galatians, but I also wanted to continue to uh, update you on my own personal stuff. Someone said they appreciated the personal updates. And um, last week I was just talking about struggles with depression and how that doesn't change and and how, you know, it's a very real real thing for me. It's a reality uh, that I have to deal with on a a normal basis, on a a pretty normal basis. But uh, I did have a medication change lowered and it seems to have really helped. And it's... uh, part of life, living life's journey, you know, it is tough trying to be a pastor and a full-time parent and a husband and just keep things moving and active and a student and all these things. And, uh, sometimes you need extra help and then sometimes you realize that help might be too much. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, doing, doing well. So, that's my little miniature update for me, and I uh, hope you're doing well as well. <laughs> We're in Galatians uh, 5 still. We stopped uh, before we got to 16. And 16 is uh, one that's probably been used uh, against a lot of people. Probably you've had it told, uh, you heard as a sermon sermon before about who's going to heaven and hell and all that kind of stuff. And this verse is not about that at all, but I just want to kind of cover some ground we already covered first. Um, And that's right back at five. I must just five thirteen says for you were called freedom, brothers and sisters only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love come slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single command. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If however you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. And I think with the continued uh, atmosphere uh, that's going on with the politics right now and and uh, we've got to be careful that we're not consumed by one another and that we continue to allow love to to guide us. And so I want to keep that as part of that, that this message, um, because it's an important part of this letter and, you know, we don't have whole time to read the whole letter at once and then talk about it. So we're cutting it into pieces like someone did with verses and chapters. Um, but I think that's an important thing to remember and that's where we're coming from and we're about to get into the next thing. But, uh, so beware of biting and devouring one another. Love each other. That's that's a good recommendation. That's a good command. If we're going to have commandments, I think loving our neighbor as ourself is a pretty damn good one. And it would be great if that's what we were known for. It goes on into 16. It says, Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. No, it says, for these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now, I find it interesting is because Paul feels like flesh, being part of the flesh is the law as well, you know that you're in the flesh when you're following the law um, and that grace 
is is the spirit. So it's very interesting. But he goes, but if you're led by the spirit, you're not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Um, fornication, impurity, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you grew up like me, uh, I heard this verse as, these people aren't going to heaven. (laughs) These are bad people. And um, even when I first started preaching grace and, and loved Galatians, the first time I read it, that how I saw that verse and I was like what do I do with this verse it seems to be a bit contradictory towards the rest of the book and some people would be like no no brother it's not Um, but the way I was reading it was uh, and there's a few different ways to look at this Um, one is the the, is it's a cause and reaction cause and reaction. I mean, it's cause and effect is what Paul's talking about. But it's also, it says, won't inherit the kingdom of God. Now remember, we've already talked a lot about inheritance in this book and uh, what it's like to be an inheritance and, and, and saying you want to inherit something. So it's not saying that when you die, because that's not inheritance. When you die, you don't get an inheritance. It's when someone else dies, you get the inheritance. So what he's saying is, is the kingdom of God is now. It's something that is now. It's not something that is beyond the grave. You know, it's not that which we're waiting for. He's saying you'll miss out on that. And in a second, we'll talk about what the kingdom of God is. But uh, I had to look up, I'm not going to lie, enmities. <laughs> which is uh, the state of feeling or being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. So I think some of these this, on this list are quite interesting because I think we, the ones we ignore are, uh, it's just funny, you know, it's like it's easy to say like, oh, fornication and drunkenness, like the fun ones, like those, you know, well, that's why it can't be down with Christianity. Um, sorcery. I love sorcery. Um, but, uh, people don't get the, you know, we forget to look at the idea that it also says animities, which is, you know, feeling towards hostile towards other people, strife or jealousy or anger, quarrels, arguing, constantly arguing, which, which is what Paul's doing here. Dissension which Paul's dealing with right here, that there's been dissension. Factions, you know, thinking you're better than other people, starting small groups that that uh, that leave others out. Envy, you know, wanting what others have, hating others for what they have. Um, so not just drunken and carousing are, are the things here. But I want you to just look at these as your own life and see what you feel is uh what do these kind of take you out of out of peace really because that's what it's it's talking about it's talking about god here god's presence here on earth now not you know the ground of being your ultimate concern it's not talking about an afterlife this is not an afterlife verse um and it goes on to say In 22, by contrast, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited competing against one another, envying one another. 
So what it's saying is that these things, and I'm going to read it. um, I have a paraphrased Bible here as well, and I'll read that in more the fleshly list from there so it gets a better idea. Uh, Sexual immorality, impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasures, which I think they're really doubling down on that one on this translation. Idolatry, participation in demonic activities, I guess that would be sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, divisions, and the feeling that everyone is wrong except those in your own little group. Envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other kinds of sins. Now, that's the New Living, how they put it. This one has carousing and... and, uh, drunkenness and envy but anyway so that's that's another way of, of hearing that uh more of a paraphrased translation that's translated thought by thought rather word by word which uh, i'm reading from someone asked the other day the new revised standard version because it's a more accurate version anyway so i think we see a lot of dissension a lot of factions a lot of jealousy I think we see a lot more of that in the church than drunkenness and carousing. You would think the church has has picked the ones they want to rather than going after envy and uh, selfless ambition and divisions and uh, things like that. We've gone after these other things. Now, this is just things that steal your love joy, your peace, your patience, your kindness, your generosity, your faithfulness, your gentleness, and your self-control. That's what it's saying. It's not saying that these are things that send you to hell. Because if it was a list of this is what sends you to heaven and hell, one, it would be law. And two, we would just, we'd have this little perfect little list. We could just cut it out, laminate it, put it in our pocket, And just go, okay, I'm not doing any of these things. So the kingdom of God is the fruits of the Spirit. And, you know, that's good news. That is uh, a message that for years tortured me um, because I thought people I loved and cared about were just done you know people you know when I was an alcoholic I thought I was going straight to hell still an alcoholic and I'm one drink away from being drunkenness and carousing you know um yeah I have impure thoughts of course I'm a human being so you know but I also deal with on a more regular basis jealousy Envy, you know, intimate, intimate tease, <laughs> strife, you know, daily. These are things that I deal with. So it's not just, you know, the enmity which sounds like anonymity, but anonymity, the state of feeling or being actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. I have that feeling. I have that feeling in many relationships and friendships, not many and tons right now, but just a few in my life, you know, but things I deal with where I don't have peace in those areas. I don't have patience in those areas. I might have a kindness, but... I don't find peace, you know. Um, I might be faithful to the situation, but I'm not necessarily have the self-control or the gentleness that I would like. And that's what this is talking about. So I hope for some of you who've read verses like this and found them to be uh, stealers of of serenity, destroyers of serenity, are able to see it in a different way and realize that this is not talking about the afterlife. 
Uh, this is not this is not the final judgment on people. You know, it would make sense because Paul's talking about the law, which was that. And now he's saying we're free from that. And he's saying these are the things, you know, of course, he's also covering and, and saying, because a lot of people were saying he said you can do whatever you want. And he's saying, I'm not saying you can do all these things. You can do these things. But if you do, you might do it at the sacrifice of joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, you might not live in the spirit. You might miss out on the fruits of the spirit. You know, so we won't inherit these things that we've inherited from Christ's death that the new covenant has given us. Not our death. So I hope you find hope in that. I find hope in that. And, uh, get into six next week um thanks for listening and uh you know remember don't bite and devour devour one another be you know we don't want to consume each other but love your neighbor as yourself that's what we need to become slaves to one another through love and i can't I can't uh, push that thought more right now. Um, I think it's something that we all need to sit with. And uh, this other, this other thing's important too. I want us all to have the fruit of the spirit, especially in you know this time. But I think that all that comes from avoiding strife and anger and quarrels and dissension and having factions. So. You know, when you love your neighbor as yourself, those things aren't issues. We love each other and when we're aware of uh, the consequences of what happens when we do those things, when we infight and when we go out to destroy one another, it can consume us. So thank you. This is Revolution Church.